Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the most important episode of the Funny Business Podcast ever. We are at episode 100. We are in the triple digits. Uh, they said it couldn't be done, but here we are. Uh, Mike, we have an awesome episode planned for everyone at home today. But first, how are you? How are things? We made it. We made it, man. Episode 100. Uh, circumstances are a little different from here on out, but mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, but fortunately, the show must go on. So we're we're excited to be here, Matt. But uh, I think Matt, whoever's watching the YouTube video, notices a little difference with episode 100. Yeah, if you don't notice a little difference, go to the eye doctor. Um, <laughs> it's a little concerning. Uh, but we do have some very special guests with us today. Uh, are we just going to dive right into it? Yeah, let's go for it, Matt. Okay, we have our girlfriends on the show. Whoa. Jenna is with Mike. April is with me. Uh, we did say we were going to try to do this uh, in person last week. Uh, however, um, no snow just sucks, and Pennsylvania is the worst state in the history of the earth. Uh, so we're doing it over Zoom, but we're going to make it work. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so Jenna, April, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Ah, uh, it's a pleasure. Yeah. I Absolutely. Bet it, I bet it really is. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we set some grad rules beforehand. Um, we're going to make sure there's, it's a clean podcast, okay? Yeah, I have a strict contract. Yeah. Do you, though? I don't, I don't think we signed anything for you. Oh. <laughs> That's the difference of how long have you guys been dating? S uh, seven months? Almost five. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I thought it was longer than that. <laughs> no, almost, almost five. five. Yeah, there. There, there's the difference. Five months or three years. Right. And one yeah. month. <laughs> Let's say you start a podcast or you're running your own side hustle and have a bunch of links that you want your audience to know about. As a podcast, Matt and I have all of our social media, all of our podcast links, and other important things. Make it easier for your followers to find your important links, social media, and latest content by having it all in one page with solo.to. I'll be honest, I have used similar websites like this, but nothing compares to solo.to. All of your links are clean and easy to navigate. Have an upcoming video? It's really easy to make those changes. Plus, solo.to has opportunities to upgrade to include more customization, advanced analytics, and so much more. Solo.to is giving us a special opportunity for you to get 10% off if you create an account and upgrade. Be sure to go to solo.to slash funny business to create your account today. Well, I think we'll be testing that eventually, but part of the reason why we are all gathered on this podcast today is I think we have been mentioning it little by little in the previous episodes. Uh, we have an amazing review for you guys today. Uh, the best thing is our girlfriends are going to pitch in and talk about it as well. Uh, it was very interesting that the, all of us together uh, watched Love is Blind Season 2. Um, now, if you all recall, uh, Matt and I did a review of Love is Blind Season 1. And I think it just makes it much nicer now that we have two significant others looking forward to talking and sharing their thoughts on if love is truly blind. So, um, Matt, let's start off, if we can. Talk about a review. And uh, oh, yeah, by the way, everybody who's listening on the show, we always say this before if you haven't watched it yet and you want to avoid spoilers, you could probably skip to maybe, I don't know, like 30 minutes into the podcast or 45. We really don't know how long this is going to be today. Right. But, yeah, we don't want to mic to spoil another TV show. Uh, yeah, we don't want to spoil another TV show, April. Uh, so we're just going to take a quick moment of silence and then we'll move on. Okay, Matt. Let's talk about just the overall what happens in the show, because as pointed out by our loyal fans, that we haven't really explained what Love is Blind is to the people who've never watched Love is Blind. Yes, not, sure, so. not, that, it, not that it wasn't explained in previous episodes, but I, I was telling Mike last weekend, I think we need to give a better explanation, because before I watched this season two... I was not aware of the fact that they aren't in the pods the entire mm -hmm. time. It's a fair point. So, so basically for anyone at home, uh, there is, I don't know how many guys and girls they use on each side, but it's basically a dating show where you try to see if love is blind by dating without seeing the other person. 
So uh, the male is in one room, the female is in another room, and they have a divider between them. And they just try to get to know each other and try to build a love connection between someone. And then hopefully there's a proposal at the end. And if the girl says yes, and they are engaged, they see each other for the first time. And then after that, they go to, they always go to, I think, I don't remember season one if they went to Mexico, but they go to a resort with all the other couples, try to get to know each other. Then they get to see the other people they may have been talking to, may have had some relationships with. That gets a little awkward at times. Uh, And then after, I think, a week of that, I think then they go to their hometowns and try to live with each other, meet each other's families. Uh, And then in all of this is in a time span of like four weeks, I believe. So four or five weeks, 10 days for the pods and then a month until the wedding after they leave Mexico. So they basically have a month to say I do. And then it's always the uh, anticipation of will they say yes or will they say no? And to find out if truly love is blind love is blind <laughs> by the way before we get into the review i yep. love the hosts nick and vanessa oh so good they're fantastic couple goals I, th- I think having a couple do it is even better i honestly did not realize until the reunion that they were married <laughs> i feel oh, like really? they like they weren't really in it that much and i don't know i missed that somehow that they were married they weren't they weren't in but they are much good. of it yeah, they are good together. Yeah. Uh, so do we, do we, do we, I can't talk. The, last, the past week, Matt, are you nervous? I just can't form words. No, I'm really not. <laughs> I just can't form words the past week. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so are we, do we want to go just couple by couple? I, I think that would be best. Um, okay. Just obviously, I think a lot of us have a lot of opinions um, for, for every couple. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what everybody's thoughts were. I think maybe an easy one that we can all start off with uh, is Ayana and Jarrett. Um, so they both were a couple that came together. Uh, unfortunately, Jarrett had some a little love before of another couple who got engaged, but we can talk about that later. Uh, but they eventually said yes at the altar. Um, I thought it was a super cute couple. Um, I thought it was really cool that Jared's dad wanted to be the person who did the wedding, um, but also put so much more weight on everybody being like, well, what if they say no at the altar? Like literally his dad <laughs> is going to stand at the altar and is going to process that. No, this is not happening. Um, April, I, you, you look like you shook your head. I think you had some pretty good thoughts about that. Yeah, no, I loved that. I got nervous right before he proposed. He was really confused between which girl he really had feelings for. And I don't know about you guys, but I know we were rooting for Ayana. We were like, no, you're going for the wrong one. Like, you gotta. (laughs) So once he finally proposed to Ayana and they made it to the altar, we were pretty confident. Yeah. Matt, I don't know if you had any thoughts. Uh, I was pretty confident with them the whole time, except for the fact when he was like trying to go out more and she didn't want to, I was a little concerned like if the, he was going to be able to tone it down or if she was going to be a little more extroverted, but it seems like they've, they've figured that out pretty quickly. Uh, they were probably my favorite couple on the show. For really, sure. really the only one that I actually loved, uh, together. And I think that was probably the easiest yes out yeah. of any couple in the show. Mm-hmm. I think if we would have gotten to know there, that would have been like a bomb drop. I was a little hesitant when they were in Mexico and he had that conversation with the other girl who, if I'm remembering correctly, he did propose to her and she said no, right? He proposed to her first. I think so. And they were, for those who haven't watched, they were discussing um basically just their their love uh beforehand and that they both kind of ended up with different people and she had a ring on her finger from the person she's engaged to um and what did he say oh you like gold you like and gold yeah you like gold and mm-hmm. she had a silver ring on her finger and like he i don't know i was a little like oh is this going to work out at that point because he i don't know he seemed like he still had some pretty strong feelings for her um i think that whole conversation was just very bizarre i don't know how april and jenna i guess you can speak this better if (laughs) like 
if me or Mike would have proposed to someone else, said no, and then proposed to you, like, would how would that have made you guys feel? I think at the reunion, they spoke about it very well, and they all said their I'm sorry it was inappropriate to have that conversation. But I don't know, like watching the show back, if I would have realized that I was second, that definitely would have been a big hump to get over in the relationship. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I feel like the whole process is very rushed. So it's hard, like being him. You can't really imagine. You're kind of just pressured into choosing one quickly and you don't really know. Um and I think the the girls probably feel the same way. So maybe just knowing that you're you're part of that experiment, that you're being pressured, I I might be a little more lenient in that case. But in real life, I uh, you know <laughs> if that happened in real life, I don't think I'd be okay with it. Can, the can worst we, the worst part is this is real life for them. <laughs> can, can well, what we if talk? Mike proposed to me? Well, <laughs> better taxes, man. Better tax taxes. benefits. Tax benefits. <laughs> Can we talk no. about how cheesy the going out was for Jarrett and his friends? Like it literally oh. looked like a subpar. Like somebody was given five hundred bucks to make like a montage of them going out and drinking and dancing. I thought it was very <laughs> forced. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 for sure. It was very, very staged. So, do mm. we ship Ayana and Jarrett? I. Yes. All right. That that's it for Ayana and Jared. Okay. So let's kind of transition into the next couple that we kind of spoke very shortly about when Jared was going through his process. Uh, Mallory and Sal. Uh, Mallory was the individual that Jared was originally interested in, um, but it seemed that Sal was apparently the one. But unfortunately, Sal was the one at the altar who said no. I need mm-hmm. more time. Um, Matt, I'll toss it to you. Your thoughts on that. Yeah, I was surprised that he said no. If anything, I thought Mallory would have said no. These two just confused me the whole time. Um, you know, they seemed like they had some good moments and then they would have an argument and it seemed like they like had a healthy way of like coping with it and they talked it out. So I kind of thought they were going to say yes, but th- they were just confusing to get a grip on because sometimes they were good. Sometimes they were bad. I don't know if Sal was really, Sal in the reunion seemed very put off by the conversation that she had with Jarrett. So I don't know if that played a big part in it or it was, you know, his ex-girlfriend reaching out and uh, Mallory's sister was not okay with it. So maybe there was a lot of external factors that we didn't see that got put into it. But I was a little surprised that his no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Watching it, I thought when his no was more directed towards her family and i thought the producers really didn't show what maybe what was going on behind closed doors with their family but then watching the reunion uh the tea was spilled that he had an ex-girlfriend in the mix of this that we didn't know the whole time so i thought that was maybe there is more to their whole story than we even could have assumed so i actually did a little research and i found out that the couples actually can't announce any type of significant relationship so whether they get engaged or married or not um so fun fact season one of i almost said too hot to handle uh, oh God. <laughs> uh season one of love is blind was actually shot in 2018 but it wasn't released until 2020 wow oh my god so for cameron and lauren the, the couple that, that said yes at the altar, they literally had to wait until 2020 for them to actually officially announce that they were married. So, um, yeah, nobody nobody knows. Like, the outside just doesn't know. And, you know, I think at that time, that ex coming up and being like, oh, like, I thought you liked me. And it's like, well, I'm engaged. So... <laughs> It's a tough conversation to have. <laughs> very, very tough conversation. I necessarily didn't like... Um, yeah, it was very it was very polarized. Like it seemed like Mallory on good days liked Sal and then on bad days didn't, but then they made up. And I feel like Sal wasn't expressing his feelings enough. I think he was just kind of going through the motions. He was singing every time he needed to sing and all those things. <laughs> it was it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Sal Sal was just a unique person. You know, there's not many people who just profess their love to uh their girlfriend or fiance whoever they're 
profess their love to their love uh, with a ukulele and, a, <laughs> you know, a little serenade in Spanish. Um, Mi corazón. But I said to Mike, I was like, you know, he's not mainstream uh, dating in 2022, but he has his own way. And I, I, I did think they were cute at times. Um, but I, I agree with both of you were saying there, there wasn't much shown, uh, you know, behind the scenes. There's so much we didn't know about them, uh, about all the couples, but them especially. Um, there was just a lot. Yeah, that we, we couldn't reunion. really judge based on what we saw. Right, because even in the reunion, he's like, you know, some things happen, but we're going to keep that separate quiet because the past is the past like he didn't even want to dive into it then mm -hmm. um what did you guys think about his singing <laughs> <laughs> i was hoping someone was gonna bring that up <laughs> like if it was good singing or not yeah just yeah i mean appropriate i mean like i said i thought it was it was kind of cute even though it was different um so how come you never say my singing's cute you don't play the ukulele. Oh, so I need to play <laughs> oh, the ukulele wow. for me to sound cute. <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't a, a fantastic singer, that's for sure. But it, he had I'm good surprised. intentions, I think. I'm surprised they put in so much of his singing. Like You're they right. spent all those minutes on his ukulele. It, it was a lot. You're right. <laughs> My favorite is when they started doing the circular motion with the camera when they were like hugging like at like the, the park. Like it was this like constant spinning around. I'm like, I could just imagine like a stranger just walking in the park and just seeing a cameraman like spinning in circles around this couple and they're like hugging and kissing each other. I'm like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> but um, Matt, let's let's toss it to you, man. Which which couple do you want to talk about next? Oh man, um, I don't think I can wait any longer to talk about uh, Shake and, and Deep T. <laughs> um, Shake and Deep T had an, an interesting relationship. I think they were one of the, the first ones to get engaged, if I remember. Yes. I don't remember the order exactly. Um, and Shake was... How do I put this nicely? <laughs> uh, a douche. Douche. Could we watch the whole show? Uh, just couldn't get over the fact that he wasn't physically attracted to Deep T, who is a queen. I think we can all agree oh, Deep is a queen. Uh, and then ultimately at the altar, I thought I was surprised Deep T said no. I thought if anything, I think I thought it was Shake, but I'll throw it to, to either Mike or Jenna first. Your thoughts on those two? Uh, I don't even know where to begin with it. <laughs> <laughs> he Same. had a Tesla. So that was nice. Yeah, he was definitely a little full of himself. Um, and I feel like I liked him more at the, like the earlier episodes. Um, you know, as time went on, you like mm -hmm. realize more about his character. And then in the reunion is when you really found out about his character. Um, but yeah, just seems like full of himself definitely you know has a lot of money he's a vet he has smart home. drives his drives his tesla and i think his intentions just weren't in the right place the whole time and and when they were saying in the reunion too like this wasn't the show for you it it definitely wasn't because he clearly needed to see um his potential wife before before marrying her there's no doubt about it it's yeah, I admittedly, I it was it was a roller coaster for me to actually like shake. Um, you know, we were kind of cracking up when when he was showing his smart home and his Tesla, and Jenna's like, "That'll be you, hopefully, in like thirty years." No, or so. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. I didn't say that will be you. I said that would be you if you had the money. <laughs> I'm oh yeah, don't. because because when they went into his apartment, it was like this you know sky rise all he was like oh i love black all black leather furniture and i was like yeah that's that's mike if if he could live that life he would. what gives you that idea <laughs> what what gives you that idea that mike likes black leather furniture uh have you seen his apartment <laughs> right correct <laughs> april hasn't so she can't judge <laughs> Fair point. i mean right. mike has mike has one black 
leather chair. I originally had right. two. But R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Yeah. R.I.P. in peace. If he could have his whole house. Sweet Prince. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I. It was very hard to to accept Shake being on that show. Um, I think it just it really disappointed me that he was really just looking for more. I can't believe he said the word animalistic feelings to his mother. Like, why would you ever talk about your sexual attractions to your Mm -hmm. mother? And like, yeah, like you're supposed to come to your mom and like have these deep conversations and almost vulnerable conversations. But like you could have said it in a different way. Like, oh, like, you know, I'm not feeling like this kind of passion or anything like that. No, just an animalistic attitude. Like it was it was stupid. Yeah. And I feel like animalistic is a very strong word. Like. Mm -hmm. I think someone did mention someone did mention in the reunion like but we're humans we're not animals so you shouldn't you you know you shouldn't feel animalistic to your fiance (laughs) yeah so what do you have to add I just think in the reunion we really got his character I feel like the whole time we were like well they're on they're rocky and it kind of to to me i thought they were both going to say yes i thought maybe they'd put their their beliefs ahead of them and just try to start their family and they were getting really into making it official and then for her to show herself so beautiful in her dress all done up and have everyone there to support her to say no that was the queen move i nothing else can top that she killed it yeah no i did she was an awesome person you know what we know of her (laughs) yeah really cool yeah she definitely deserves better Uh, i couldn't imagine what she was going through that whole time kind of like just knowing that your fiance isn't physically attracted to you uh, that has to be terrible Do you think, Matt, people are tired of hearing our Anchor ad? Yeah, probably. But let's be honest. If it wasn't for Anchor, we would not be doing a podcast. You're right, Matt. Once again, we have to thank Anchor for helping us continue to make each episode. Y'all know how it works. Anchor is free. It's easy to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And distributes your podcast to platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And you all know that you can make money, too, even with the first couple episodes that you start with. So why haven't you started your own podcast yet? Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. So Mike, when do you think we'll stop talking about Anchor? Oh man, Matt. You know what? To be completely honest, I think we'll be talking about this for a long time. Yeah. And then I feel like for a lot of the time though, he, at least from what we saw, he didn't reveal that. Like, Mm -hmm. he came out explicitly to all the other guys, even at the bachelor party and, like, on the wedding day, that he's not, still not physically attracted to her. And, but I feel like he was never upfront with her about that, which is just wrong, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, if this is going to work, you have to be honest. Yeah, and I think at the reunion, too, she had said that the the other guys had even warned her, like, you don't want to go through with this. You deserve better. And I, and we just didn't see that part watching the show until the reunion that he truly was just a douche and didn't wasn't in it for the right reasons shut up shane (laughs) that reunion was super awkward and it was you felt the let's just say you felt the presence of when Mm -hmm. um like shake was talking and like you just heard just a, a team just (sighs) <sighs> for him, it was John. so hostile <laughs> can i just say something that i almost want to have somebody say no please don't <laughs> yeah he's like i'm just saying what everyone at home is thinking they're like <laughs> no. no one at home is thinking like this uh yeah i think i think we said he was on the wrong show he should have been on too hot to handle yes absolutely that's the and show that, for him but that i don't probably... think he's too hot to handle <laughs> no i, I agree <laughs> that show would probably ruin him much more because he can't touch anybody Oh, he would animalistic. he would be a bigger rule breaker than Harry and Francesca. <laughs> no, I was gonna say bigger than Nathan and Holly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, that's that's a fair point. They broke he a maybe lot. should just not be on a show and be in real life. Yes. Yeah. There are people. Right. You know, well he, he is- wanted to start he wanted to start Love is Blurry. That's true. So. Right. 
<laughs> Stay he, tuned. He is a vet, so I can't understand the animalistic attitude because all he can actually get along with is probably animals. So that's a good point. <laughs> but I don't know. Do you get along with animals if you're a vet? Kind of. I mean, if, I feel like you uh, kind of have to. Like you have to like them, but you also yeah. have to like put them to sleep. I don't think I've ever seen a teacher. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a teacher say I don't like kids and end up in a teaching job. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> Fair point. Yeah. Do you have to like people to be a doctor though? Oh, I think there's doctors that mm -mm. hate their patients. They're like, yeah. oh, this guy's coming in today. I'd say <laughs> most. Bitch. I'd say most do. Can only imagine your doctors, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, April, what what couple you got? Nick and Danielle, and then Shane and Shana. I mean, excuse me, Shane and Natalie. I think Nick and Danielle were so wishy-washy that I was totally taken back that they both said yes, that they've lasted this long, did not think that was going to be a healthy and sturdy relationship in any means. And if it was anything like her furniture, sturdy was not in their relationship. <laughs> That is so true. I feel, yeah, she, for people who don't know, she had a lot of anxiety, which is fine. Um, what, what made me nervous was the, the role her anxiety was playing in the stability of their relationship, like you said. Um, and in most cases, like, say she was a girlfriend of mine, I would say, like, okay, you're, you're not ready personally to be married. Like we got to got this under control. Um, so you, yeah, you know, like sh she found self-confidence. She was one who, you know, she said she lost a lot of weight and stuff. So she was more confident in herself, I think, than in her previous life, but still not fully confident in herself. So I look at her and I'm like, all right, she's one who's not ready to get married, but also they're at the point that she's like, what, 32? 30 ish it's like will you like we're not gonna wait till you're 50 to figure this out so mm -hmm. that's why like i was okay with them getting married um because i, I felt like you know she'll work through it and he and was think, supportive of her right and i think that's what nick needed is it nick yeah. yes yeah. Uh, I think that's what Nick needed to hear too, because I think he did truly love her. I think in the back of his head, he was just like, does she really love me? And I think once he heard that yes at the altar, I think it kind of clicked for him for like, it was like in his mind, he's like, okay, this is like where I'm supposed to be. Like, this is going to work out. Because I think, I think they like, they worked through a lot and they talked it out pretty well. I think they did have a few arguments that blew up a little bit, but I think they had healthy discussions between the two of them. And I really think that they both needed to hear each other say yes at the altar for them to be like, okay, we both do feel this way. It's going to work out going forward. Because leading up to the reunion, I was a little skeptical on if they were going to be together. But it seems like their relationship got a lot stronger since they both said yes. Yeah, at the reunion, they seemed pretty strong and comfortable with each other, not um, as anxious as the whole relationship was during the season. I, I had a very hard time trying to except Nick and Danielle. Um, obviously, just because I've dealt with a, a ton of people who have had the same anxieties as Danielle, um, you know, more so just like, where are you? Like, why aren't you home yet? And like, you know, all those like second guessing and, and all those things, it, it really puts a test to, to a relationship. It puts a test to a friendship. Um, you know, I, I thought her personality was really cute. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm not a partier myself, but I thought it was funny that she still has rock band that she wants to play. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have one in my parents' basement, April, if you really want it. <laughs> you have no idea how bad I love rock band and my guitar's broke, so I'm lost. <laughs> I'd have to check. I have a we definitely so had it not late. too long Absolutely. ago. We can actually have a whole band. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Two I call guitars, two guitars, drums, and a microphone. We could totally rock it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, I've, I certainly had a very hard time. I was happy that they kind of broke all those walls and and went through and and actually said yes. I was surprised just because Love Is Blind really likes to 
cut and and produce their episodes to to be mm-hmm. very suspenseful um but but yeah i uh i was very happy that they said yes and i think i think moving forward they they are actually good um as we saw in the recap with reunion they tend they blended their relationships pretty well Mm -hmm. um rock bands actually came to the house and you know all their clothes all of danielle's clothes are still in the guest bedroom but it's it's working i agree i I thought i was happy that they worked it out uh and i guess last but certainly not least uh is shane and natalie um i have a lot of questions but uh april i'll toss it to you pal what what did you think of of shane and natalie Shane himself as a human being should not have been on that show. No one should have told him he could get married in under a month. Like (laughs) he just was such a ball of energy and didn't know what to do with himself, let alone with a partner. And Natalie was just such a sweet, dainty, like misunderstood human being. I feel like walking in when she was telling us about herself, she had said, you know, people look at her and just assume stereotypes. So she wanted to just be herself. So I felt really bad for her getting wrapped in with all of Shane's. Uh, his energy just really got in the way of him communicating to her. And he constantly needed to be reassured that he was good looking enough or loved enough. And it just really, really left me so skeptical of their relationship to their wedding day and how everything panned out when they were trying to figure it out afterwards it should have just been a closed book well hold on what, what is shane what, what did we call shane the whole time a man child yeah. yeah yeah he's a man child shane shane looked like he I, I, I hate to I hate to be this person to make fun of somebody this way, but Shane looked like he was trying to hide himself, that he was becoming a werewolf and he was trying to tame it down. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it actually hurt me to watch him try to talk, and that's coming from me who can't talk. Yeah, I can't form sentences. <laughs> yeah, no, the the man child thing is true because I was I've thought that the whole time. He reminds me of like a sophomore maybe even a freshman in college, like just a like way younger than he actually is. Like, I mean, April will probably agree with me and every other woman in the world that men never really grow up, but he didn't even grow up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he was not ready for marriage. Uh, I don't know why he wanted to be on the show. Um, Natalie deserves way better. And I don't blame Natalie. You know, she kept saying a few times during the reunion that, like, that the night before the wedding still kind of, like, plays in her head. I don't blame her, because I think she was really in love with him, and I think he was really in love with her. And, you know, it's a shame that the night before the wedding they had this blow-up, but I think in a weirdly, ironically good way, it's probably a good thing, because maybe they wouldn't have worked out going forward. Like, I think that blow-up was going to happen at some point. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, and it sucks that it happened the night before the wedding. But I think it, that really did make her realize, like, maybe this isn't what I want. You guys want to hear something really juicy that I found? Absolutely. So there was a report, and Natalie actually posted this on her Instagram as an Instagram reel. Oh, no. Natalie was actually proposed to somebody else first before Shane. Oh? Like, in the show? In the show, but it never, it never, never made the cut. Was it somebody that wasn't shown on the show, or was so, it one yeah of the... somebody that wasn't shown on the show? Like, wow. somebody oh. was was proposed to her, but they never showed it. Damn. So interesting. That's crazy because then she also got mad at him for the whole Shayna thing. Oh yeah. And then it was funny. They're like, "Have you and Shayna have hung out?" And he's like. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to he talk was, about it. That made him so uncomfortable. And Shane was like, yeah, just as friends. And he was just looking like, I didn't think it was just as friends. Like, he yeah. did not want to bring that up at all. That was kind of awkward. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, so, guys, I actually found out a few more things about the show. Um, the show actually pays for part of the wedding. Um, we had a oh. question that how much they would pay for the wedding. They would pay for part of the wedding. Um, Can I comment on that real yeah, quick? Yeah, go ahead. 
So <laughs> <laughs> the floor is yours. <laughs> learning that makes me even more angry <laughs> because one of my beefs this whole time, which Mike knows, is just like, well, first of all, like how unrealistic it is. You know, mm-hmm. I get the purpose, the 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 original intention of the show to like find your true love is not based on looks. That's great. But then the way it's presented is it's so rushed that you're like mm-hmm. rushed into marriage. Um, I think it really is just damaging to them as human beings. Um, and then I, when we were watching the weddings, like we know they're not going to all say yes. And you don't know what they're going to say ahead of time, but. And they don't all know either, which is just like also really unrealistic. Like who who actually goes into their wedding day and doesn't know if they're going to say I do. Like (laughs) that's a fair point. Yeah, I think if if you're you're having the if you're having the wedding, you're going to say I do. You would call it a halt ahead of time. Like so that's why I say that makes me angry that the show only pays for part of the wedding. So they force them to have this wedding. Don't pay for the whole thing. Even when some of them know it's not going to work out. Like, weddings are so expensive. Mm-hmm. Right. I think, at, like, <laughs> on a girl perspective, if I'm going to take all that time and energy to get ready for my wedding day, it better be my wedding day. It better be the pictures that I keep forever, yeah. the dress I have forever. Like, I would want to pick out one dress, one hairstyle, <laughs> like, not have to do it all over again. And I would, I'd be yeah, devastated. Yeah. And, like, so many of them too were so miserable on their wedding day because there's just all these thoughts running through their mind and I wouldn't want to be miserable on my wedding day like obviously there's going to be a little bit of like stress because it's just like your Your big your big moment and Mm -hmm. everyone's watching you and but you should be able to have fun you shouldn't be sitting there getting your hair done thinking I don't know if he loves me and then same to the guys like they're Mm -hmm. sitting there getting ready and like down in the dumps like Oh, we weren't supposed to have that segment yeah. today. <laughs> There's your transition. No. No. <laughs> hey, our show, relax. <laughs> um, and I also... now it's time. <laughs> Down in the dumps. You're actually, I think you're, I think you're, you're, I'll give you a lot of credit, sweetheart. You're actually the, the person that I know for sure that has listened to all 100 episodes. So yeah. I won the number. I know one other person. Who's the other person? We, we, we don't say his name oh. on the show. <laughs> <laughs> April's probably catching up too. She, or uh, slacking. Either way. <laughs> sure, it's the same thing. Right. It's not the same thing. It's always I'm different. Not bad. I'm not bad. I'm just disappointed. A yeah. <laughs> little bit. A yeah. little bit. Hey, I, it's a lot of hours. And it is. Mike Mike knows that I've I, and I know April has sat and watched the mm. YouTube version, which I have never done. I I have always oh, see that's the only way I watch. Yeah, I watch. See, so. my my podcast listening has always been multitasking. I'm either running or driving. But you've always made it a point when we've either messed up or other things. So you are paying attention. Which I do oh like. yeah, I always pay attention. So well, I mess up a lot. So so circling back to the weddings. <laughs> oh God. I, I also didn't like that they had time to talk with each other, some of the couples. Like, I remember in season one, like, Messica, like, she left. Like, didn't have a chance to talk to Matt. Was it Matt? uh, Barnett. Yeah. Barnett. Barnett's the other one. No, Matt is Barnett. Oh. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think who the other person was, but, like, they didn't have a chance to talk. I saw. You mean after, after they, the, said they said no. They said no or I do. Like Mallory and Sal, they discussed after. Mm-hmm. Shane, uh, Shane and Natalie, they talked after. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, Deep D didn't even need to talk to to Shake <laughs> after. But um, I also, I just, I just did not like that because it just, it just left that cliffhanger of like, okay, they said no. And like, of course, emotions are high. Like you're gonna feel bad that you left them at the altar or vice versa whoever said no and of course i believe they do form some f- some form of attraction and connection i mean you have nothing better to do than to talk and tell your life story to somebody you're gonna have a connection but to have a big 
ceremony like that to end and then still have a conversation right afterwards, emotions are going to take over and it's not going to be a clear mind space. Yeah. Shane and Natalie's conversation after their wedding was awkward. Mm -hmm. That was hard to watch. Yeah. Again, I feel like those conversations needed to happen, but they needed to happen before the wedding. Mm -hmm. But they had no choice because their wedding date was planned, (laughs) you know? I agree. I don't think it's more show the show that love isn't blind. I think it's just like love isn't rushed. Yeah. Yes. Love is blurry. Yeah. That's that's the moral of the story is you you can't rush (laughs) love. (laughs) It needs to be organic. This was not. (laughs) So any, any final thoughts on Love is Blind season two? Are we hoping for a season three? Absolutely. <laughs> I think didn't did you? Someone said that Love is Three uh, season Love three is, is already three. filmed. <laughs> Love is I think three. Someone at work. Lo, someone at work told me season three is already filmed. Oh, yeah, that's what I heard. I, I didn't hear better. anything. I oh. just thought it was weird that they have a new spinoff or a different yeah. show. Oh, that looks terrible. That looks yeah. awful. <laughs> awful. <laughs> is it? It's called the Ultimatum. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's called yep. the ultimatum. So the 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 concept is is that they have a couple that is on the brink of marriage, but they had some type of ultimatum. But then what they do is they allow them to go on other dates with other people, and then they can either jump ship or they can stick with them. And that's that, that just sounds very like weird to I me. was saying. This show is emotionally damaging. I think that's even more uh, emotionally right. damaging by far. Like you're just publicizing a somewhat broken relationship and making entertainment out of it like yeah just... anyone willing to go on that show clearly doesn't have a, a structured relationship that oh he's not gonna leave me or will he you know like that's yeah. not no it's not good well all i can say is they signed the dotted line they signed up for it so and they probably got a lot of money out of it but mm-hmm. if, if, if you're you know if you're willing to sacrifice your emotional well-being for a lot of money go for it could you imagine being shake <laughs> being your vet and you have to like bring your yeah, cat right? to shake after this they're like yeah, get they're vet. like you're a douche but here's my cat like i wouldn't yeah. i would get a different vet <laughs> <laughs> he probably lost money for screen time or even just like ahead of time like before the show was even aired knowing that your vet is going to be like <laughs> He obviously had to take a lot of time off work. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, Dr. whatever his last name is, is going to be out of the office for a while because he's participating in the dating show on Netflix. <laughs> Dr. Douchebag. Well, yeah, really. Well, you know, I, I, to, to just leave a little period at, at, at the end, if, you know, April, you were saying if, if you brought, you know, a cat in or somebody brought a cat in, that's probably all the that he can get so that's uh you know Mike. that's i don't know if we what? can say that word on the podcast I, i'll bleep it out <laughs> okay good good that's why i had everybody silent so that way i could actually cut it in the edit so <laughs> great see you don't hear that stuff you only hear a censorship when that comes out right so. yeah this is behind the scenes <laughs> yeah. stuff you guys are learning like no one knows what's said yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen you did it at times when we censored stuff out so <laughs> i think there was one time yeah but anyway um happens so we thought uh if you haven't watched it yet season two love is blind is on netflix um also season one if you haven't already make sure you watch it um we're gonna move on because the girlfriends are here the significant others um we're gonna find out if hand check everybody yeah hand check (laughs) okay good (laughs) uh it looks like matt has his pen and paper already so we decided that we are going to play a game uh, and what that game is, is Matt and I have created six stupid questions um, that stupid. we will be asking the either the significant other or the best friend to answer. Um, however, there is an additional part where we will be earning brownie points. Um, so the way that will work out is I will be asking a question. Matt and Jenna will be trying to answer it. April will also be trying to answer it, too. Uh, and points, the question is about you. And the question is about me. Thank you. Um, whoever gets, there's no like first to answer anything. If you get it right, it's a point. Um, but if the opposite or April gets it right, she gets a brownie point. So we thought we'd make it fun. So uh, any questions before we start, guys? 
I have a question. Are you doing all six at once, or are we going back and forth? Back and forth. Okay. So, the first one, Matt, would you like to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Okay. So, um, in, in this scenario, Matt is going to be asking a question about himself. April and I are going to try to answer it. Jenna's getting brownie points. And we all have pen and paper, correct? So, there's no cheating? Yep. Beautiful. Okay. First question. So... Most people here know, the three of you know, I work in minor league baseball. However, what was my first job? Like, not full-time, like, could be a part-time job. First ever job. First ever job. Mm -hmm. Really hope I got the word right. Yeah, it'd be awkward if you didn't. Right. Right. I mean, any of these. It'd be awkward if any of you did. Yeah. Too. Right. Yeah. We all have our answer. Mike, you seemed like you, you had a, something click in your head. I had something click in my head. Okay. I, 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 I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't necessarily have the job title, but I at least know right. the, the, the thing that you did. Correct. Okay. That's fair. So I Who's guess. Who's answering first? Let's no, do, I think, are we, let's do the oh, brownie honestly, point okay. first. Let's do the brownie okay. point first. So. Okay. So this is. I have no idea what the true answer is, but this is my mm -hmm. guess. And I also don't know what the title would actually be, but I'm guessing you did something at a golf course. That's a good, good That's guess. That's a good guess. <laughs> do, we, do you all want to give your answers and then like, I'll go? Yeah, uh, we'll yeah. probably do it sure. that way. <laughs> but I was just going right. to say, like, I could picture you being um, like the guy who like gets the golf carts back in their parking spots i pray i, I would that's like a dream job <laughs> not gonna lie i had when some I'm friends like 60 and retired that's what i'm gonna do no i had some friends in high school uh who did mm -hmm. that shout out danielle and jenna uh, shout uh, out. april go, go ahead uh he didn't do much but composting so okay. i i said worked with chris who you went to high school with with okay. a mulch place Okay, Mike and Jenna, uh, Mike and April are both correct. Yes, <laughs> I worked at a uh, at a compost uh, center for about two summers, and it was the worst job of my life. <laughs> so, wait, did the compost turn into mulch? Yeah. So basically, I worked the front gate, and people would come in and drop off like tree branches and stuff like that. And then we, not me personally, because I didn't do anything there, uh, but we would turn it into mulch and compost, and then people could pick that up for their yard. Okay. Nice. Oh, that was awful. I would have never known that. <laughs> I'm so thankful. Fun I did fact. That. <laughs> so my turn. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows I like my beer. I like my IPAs. I like my Miller Lite. But mm -hmm. if I'm going to like a gala, what is my typical mixed drink that I get? My go-to mixed drink. Do, do, do. So in this event, Jenna and Matt is trying to answer. April is trying to get the brownie points. Uh, this is a tough one. I'm not going to lie. I think I have it, but I don't know. <laughs> All right. So everybody have their answer? I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. April, what is your brownie point thought? Um, I have no idea. I'm just going to go with a rum and Coke. Okay. Matt? Um... This is a throwback to John the Bottle. I want orange juice and vodka. John the Bottle, R.I.P. And Jenna. Rum and Coke. Jenna and April are correct. <laughs> See, I thought rum and Coke was too easy. <laughs> That's why myself. I get it. It's too easy. <laughs> Damn it. But now if we're at a particular place around here and where Mike and Matt went to college. Well... Oh, electric lemonade. Yep. Yeah. Lemonade. <laughs> yeah. There was a weird phase that Rodano had to get a Red Bull vodka in the big thing. That was a terrible mistake. Yeah. That was oh. just death. Or if we're at another place around here, Matt, what's his go to? Rum bucket. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the rum bucket. Absolutely. We know oh, about man. the rum. Buckets. So, all right, Matt, your turn, buddy. All right. So, this obviously, big Taylor Swift fan. Biggest one on the Zoom. Uh, what is my favorite Taylor Swift song? Oh, God. Hmm. Yeah, this is a stumper. That is a stumper. Take your time. This is, there's a lot to go through. Uh, I don't even know <laughs> if I know all the names. 
<laughs> what did no, you I'm just like say? trying to think, is it going to be a new Never Taylor mind. Swift or an old Taylor Swift? I'm not telling you. <laughs> Mike, do you know your answer? I, I have my answer locked in. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I see you. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of a going out on the limb, but, but I feel like I know it. Okay. It's, it's, we it's all weird, though. Oh, man. Now I'm second guessing myself, but yes, I'm ready. All yeah. Right. All right. Jenna, you want to go first? Rounding points. Yeah, I'm totally guessing. You belong with me. Okay. Mike? Teardrops on my guitar. Okay. Great song. April. Lover. Wow. One <laughs> of you is correct. <laughs> That would be Jenna. Oh nice. my God. You belong with me. <laughs> nice. Yep. Matt, I agree. It's my favorite too. Oh, it's it's such a banger. Or it what's just puts oh, me in a good mood. What's the one that Our song is a slip No, I'm thinking of a newer one. Um came out I was like a sophomore in high school. Oh, sh- shake it off. Ouch. That's my other not favorite. Big, I was not a huge fan of that one. Really? With that. Yeah, wasn't a big fan. Yeah, that's. I'd say that's my favorite, like, newer Taylor Swift song, and then You Belong mm-hmm. With Me is one of the good throwbacks. It's a classic. Sure. Yeah. All right, my <laughs> turn. We're switching it up a little bit. We're playing The Price is Right. Um, so this is Price is Right rules here. What is... So the closest number wins without going over. How many friends do I have on Facebook? Mm. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. This is this a stumper. stumper. <laughs> I'm gonna go. This is tough. I'm trying to do some math in my head. This is one you could cheat on. Yeah, but we all are honest people here. Hands. You want to put up one hand? Well, I don't Thank even you. know my oh. own though for this. <laughs> like, That's a I great point, Jenna. I don't, I don't know, know how my own many either. Facebook friends I have. That's why I'm playing Price is Right rules. That's fair. Get, you really think I was get, you guys were going to get it right on the nose? <laughs> no. Yeah. I would hope you wouldn't expect Fox that. Going so. generic. Really hoping that. That is. All right. Everybody locked you in? You don't know. Listen. So, yes. Okay. April, go ahead. What's your. My answer is based off of if he's anything like his dad's TikTok. <laughs> I have high hopes for you. Okay. I put 8,100. Okay. Facebook. That is an absurd guess. What? Go big or go home. What? Matt, go big or go home. I put 1,300. And Jenna. I put 750. One of you is right. It's Matthew. Oh, yes. What's the exact number? Recorded on March 8th, 2022. I have 2,222 friends. Did you really? <laughs> Damn. Two thousand. That's impressive. I don't I, even think I have five hundred. <laughs> Maybe I have seven fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Which still sounds like a lot. Because Facebook, like you typically know the people, at least me. Like mm-hmm. I make sure I've at least seen the person once. Mm-hmm. That's that's fair. <laughs> I hope I hope we're all keeping score ourselves, right? Like which ones you get right, yeah. which ones you get wrong. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. All right. Question number three for me, I believe. Yep. Um, I like all kinds of foods. I like meat. I like beer. I like fruit. I like vegetables. There's one vegetable that I despise the most. What is it? <laughs> I know this. Listen, if you didn't think I had stupid questions, you clearly don't know me well enough. Sorry. You already? I'm locked in. Okay, yeah. Jenna. Peas. Mike? Peas are f- gross. <laughs> April. Peas. It's peas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have that line engraved in my head. <laughs> Matt, yeah, I don't that... think you watched that episode. I, I did say on the podcast, peas are effing gross. I won't make you bleep that out again. Is that the only vegetable you don't like? Um, I think so. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Yep. Do you eat mushrooms? I'm starting to eat some mushrooms, okay. and I'll eat like like sugar snap peas or snow peas. I'll eat those, but like a spoonful of peas, get it out of my can't, face. Can't See, eat them out of the pod. <laughs> he is definitely a fake pea hater. I Whoa. hate Whoa. peas. I won't eat really? them in anything. Wow. I love peas. I love them. Mike eats them too. Hate them. <laughs> you okay, Matt? I don't know what that was all about. I, I didn't hear anything. 
But People canned out of the can. Ooh, canned peas oh. are the worst. <laughs> oh man, they're oh, they're man. bad. All right, moving on. <laughs> so, so you all know that uh, I do a lot of social media as per you job, do? a little bit. Um, you know, I like using emojis, like using emojis a lot. What is my favorite emoji to use? So I have a, a clarification question. Give me a clarification. Is it is it your most used emoji or your favorite your favorite favorite, favorite one okay. to use in conversation? Okay. Yeah, if it was the most used one, it'd be a red heart. <laughs> this is a stumper. I think I I don't know. I think it's too easy. Too easy. See, Matt, I disagree. This is the hardest one for me. Really? Yeah. I feel like you've told me too at some point, and I can't remember. Can I look at the emojis? Is that allowed? Yes, but you got to look on your own phone. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Draw. <laughs> I need Don't multiple worry about choice what I here. What did you draw? <laughs> Matt, <emoji>. what? <laughs> Matt, what is your favorite emoji? My favorite emoji. Um. I don't use it often, oh but I like using the shrugging emoji. Okay. Yeah. April's like, yeah, whatever. I like the the f- yellow face with the star eyes. Yeah. yeah. You do like that one. I, I do. Mm-hmm. All right. So, everybody locked in? Yeah. All right, April. Brownie points. What's yours? The muscle. The arm muscle. Like this one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah. went, I went with the crying laughing emoji. And Jenna. The dancing or like disco man. Ooh. Did you forget your own favorite? <laughs> no, I have it written down. You asked me this at dinner last yeah. night. <laughs> um, so all of you were incorrect. It is the male shrugging emoji. Oh, oh the, the one that I said. The one you said. No I was like, shit. <laughs> God damn it. I feel like That's you a good don't, one. You don't no, none of you guys see it often, but like anybody who I'm else talking to, I'm like. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, mm-hmm. same. That's me. me I feel like a while, while ago you actually told me it was the man, and maybe your emoji has changed since. I do like the dancing one, but it's a good one. Um, my next one, also something that I hate. What is my biggest pet peeve? <laughs> oh. Biggest pet peeve. Yeah, it seems like you're struggling a little bit. April wrote hers down immediately. <laughs> Mike, you seem you seem a little nervous. What talk talk me through your thought process here? I I know it, but I need like the specifics of it. Like I don't know if it's just as is or if it's something that is enhanced with something. It makes sense. That, that made me confused. <laughs> okay. Let's just say our guesses. <laughs> yes. All right, Jenna, go ahead. I'm just gonna guess um, when people like chew with their mouth open or like really loud eating. Okay. Mike? I said chewing with mouth open. April. I went very generic, just mouth noises, because anything in that realm with like eating, chewing, wet noises. <laughs> yes, that's that is correct. It is. Give yeah, us a. I'll give, give, you got it. Okay, good. Give us a demonstration, Matt, of what really. No, absolutely. Oh, no. <laughs> I do it all the time, just not even realizing it. And he's like, "Please stop! Please stop!" No, I think you do it on purpose at this point. I really don't. Sometimes I do it on purpose. Yeah, no, 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 no. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like when you snore. To your with no headphones. <laughs> that wasn't even chewing. That was. <laughs> Wow. It was like Chewbacca gurgling like <laughs> mouthwash. It sounded like when he snores. <laughs> yeah, okay. actually it kind of does. I can't wait for next week when we talk about the amazing thing about my mattress. But we'll talk about that next Monday. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. It's a fun story. All right, uh, my turn. So I do have to do a lot of traveling. And while I do love the Funny Business Podcast... What podcast do I listen to on the road the most? Bonus points if you can guess the one I listen to the second most. Mm. Mm. I have one of them. 
I'm screwed. <laughs> um, mm, this is tough. I can't think of a second podcast. I, I'm kind of curious. I I, well, I'm not answer. asking April yet, but I'm kind of curious of what you're going to say. Oh, man. I have my answers. Oh. <laughs> Everybody locked in? Yep. With both or just one? I, I have both. I'd, like, I know you've told me about the second one, but I don't have a guess of what it would be called. So I don't... You can write the people at least. No, I don't even know that. Okay. <laughs> All right. April. I'm... I'm going to accept defeat. Uh, I have no clue. I wrote uh, a big X down. I don't, the only pod, I'm a loyal uh, podcast. The only podcast, if you were going to get my views, would be yours. That is not true. We watched another podcast together. Some guy that you like. False. Watching. Okay. I don't watch any other podcasts. Anyway. <laughs> Save it for um, after pod. <laughs> Matt. My first one is the Try Guys. Okay. And uh, second one is... <laughs> You're funny. Um, <laughs> I know I am. Uh, Jenna. Try Guys is definitely the first, and the second, I don't I don't know the name, but I know you've told me about another one you listen to. Okay, so Matt and Jenna, you are correct with the Try Guys or the Tripod. Um, tripod so you yeah. get the, the correct ding for one point. Uh, <laughs> the second point, uh, if anybody would have got the bonus one, is called the Distractable Podcast. I've um, never heard of that in my life. That's where it's Bob, Wade, and Mark. Um, talk about the most random of things and one judges. It's almost like our take it segment, but just three people who judge and talk about weird stories. So it's it's a nice like white noise type of podcast to listen to. So Okay. Uh, interesting. I never would have guessed that. My fifth one, we're getting down to it. Um I'm just gonna say the question right away. What is my favorite feature of my body? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're uh you know what do i love about myself <laughs> right. if we need to if we need to open up the discussion of what matt and i had last wednesday uh no nope. i would like to keep that conversation to ourselves thank you very much last wednesday uh, or was yep. it monday i think it was monday no it was sunday it was anyway. last week i need yeah, to it doesn't matter what were you doing what were we doing? Huh? <laughs> we're actually we were actually doing Rocket League, so yeah. We were just we were having conversations, right? Personal conversations that will never leave our minds. Are we all ready? Absolutely. Jenna, go ahead. Your calves. Okay, Mike, go ahead. Damn it! I said your eyes. April. I said your eyes. My calves. I know it yeah, is. It is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Love my calves. Damn it. I'm very disappointed in both of you, Mike. And I think I'm I very have more brownie points than you I, 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 As soon as Jenna said calves, I'm like, damn it. I said he goes uh -huh. golfing. He loves his outfits. He yeah. checks Absolutely. out his calves. Like, well. Yeah. Wait, I'll are we keeping score? Calves. Yeah. Yourself. Oh, I wasn't. I said that like question three. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wait, I can go back and do it. I have them all here. Yeah. All right. I'm very disappointed. Wait, are we separating yeah, you know, you should be. points and brownie points? Uh, no, it's just points. No. Okay. So who yeah. gets the most points overall? Yeah. Correct. Uh, okay, my turn. So this is going to be an interesting one. This is a guess. It's a number. What number did I choose for my Harlem Globetrotters jersey when I played with them? Mm, yep. Am I allowed to turn? Son of a bitch no no you can't <laughs> that's no a, it's back there <laughs> uh, that's gonna drive me nuts <laughs> i've even seen me. those pictures why, did why didn't i just cheat <laughs> yeah that's gonna drive me nuts <sighs> I'll, I'll give you a hint it was my number all of my sports yeah. that i played in eighth grade yeah can we get like a one through 20 or like a <laughs> fine i'll give you a one through 20. well obviously <laughs> i have my guess i think it's wrong wait what like it is it's lower it, than it's 20. a number it's a number between one and 20. okay that does help i have my guess but i think it's wrong now april i could have picked 99 if i really wanted to yeah all right i'm, Locked I'm ready. in. ready yep april 12. 
Matt? 11. Jenna? So I was between 14 and 18, but I'm going to go 14. Jenna's correct with 14. Ah, uh, damn it. Yeah, I looked back there, I'm and sucking. there is a there is a picture of us uh, when I played yeah, with them, and I'm like, is. oh, yep, you can see that very clearly. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm pissed. It's okay, Matt. I, th- okay. I thought there was a one. Listen, I Jenna knew there was a one. Jenna knew about your calves more than I did, and that's kind of concerning. That's true. That's true. Uh, most of these things I know about Matt is just from listening to the podcast. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> All right Matt. Speaking of something else I've mentioned on the podcast before, I have a two-parter for my final answer. So is it a bonus point, or is it two yeah, points? Yeah, it's a bonus point. It's a bonus okay. point. Okay. Um, what was my favorite stuffed animal as a kid? What was his name? I know the name. <laughs> I was going to say, I remember this being mentioned, but I don't think I know the answer. I did share this with you. You did. I did. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Wow. <laughs> You had like a blanket as a little kid, right? You didn't have like an animal. Yeah, I had a blanket. Yeah. I do remember that. Are you ready? I'm ready. Jenna? Yep. Go Jenna, ahead. Your answer. I don't have a guess for the name, but I'm going to guess a lamb. Okay. Mike? You had a rabbit, and the rabbit's name was Charlie. April? I have an awful girlfriend. Um, a lion? <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> um, the only person to get one thing correct is Mike got the bonus point correct. His name was Charlie. He was a monkey. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Once I heard Charlie, I knew that was correct. And then I was like, I don't think it was a bunny. Yes, this came up because Mike's dog, Charlie. Charlie. Your That's how I remember that. Yeah. Stuffed yep. animal, Charlie. All right. Yeah. This one should be interesting for everybody. If I could only eat one thing for lunch and dinner, what would it be? piece of cake are you sure about that yeah see <laughs> are you that sure about that is a stump that was a pun what i said that was a pun what piece of cake because right. I, I was saying piece of cake because i know the answer but the answer is not piece of cake oh, okay i Everybody have my locked answer in? jenna pizza April. I put ham sandwich. Sorry. I, I can explain myself if you'd like to. Uh, after Matt responds. It's not a terrible I guess. Went, I went pepperoni pizza. All right, April, what's your what's your explanation for ham sandwich? <laughs> well, watching, I think you guys were streaming. Uh, you were trying to like bully Matt into packing a lunch and you were like, it's easy. I eat the same thing every day. And I was like, that's yeah. You half listened. It was it's a turkey sandwich. So well, sometimes you eat ham, though. I do eat ham sometimes. But um, he does. But. No one got a point. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> Buffalo chicken. We've definitely talked about this before, and you've told me pizza. Like, if you had to eat only one <laughs> thing him, the rest of your no, life, it would it be pizza. Him. Buffalo chicken. <laughs> All right. So but, telling- like, but hold on. So you just eat buffalo chicken, not buffalo chicken pizza, not a buffalo chicken wrap. Like, those are two different foods. What he means is chicken tenders out of the freezer smothered sauce. in buffalo chicken. sauce. Okay, okay. You've never okay. done that, though. It wouldn't be good. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. All right, so tallying up the points. I got four. I have four. Matt? I have two. Seven. Wow. Oh. <laughs> so I guess Jenna's the winner overall. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I do have a question, though, about that last question. If I would have said buffalo chicken pizza... Would that have been correct? Probably would have given you a half point. Oh. Okay. Well, I still won. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, I didn't need the half point. <laughs> uh, so, Matt, would you mm-hmm. like to toss one more segment for this for this great podcast? Absolutely. Okay. Let's. Uh, I didn't share this with with you at all. Uh, we're gonna dive into a little take it right now. Uh, there's something been going around oh, the this last couple weeks. I knew this was gonna happen. Uh-huh. Are you? 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> he just walked out of the room. M- Oh, wait even... till he puts his headphones back on. Mike, would you like to introduce this take yeah, segment? Yeah, sure. What's there, more on, what's there more on the earth? Doors or wheels? Oh, this is, yeah. God. Wait, has this been going around on the internet? Yes. Okay. It has been, yes. I'm not on the internet much. Right. Evidently. So it's... Uh, uh, who wants to go first? All the kids at work came up to my desk and was like, "What do you? what's your opinion? I was like, this hurts my head. Go away. Right. There's one clear answer. So the question is, what is there more of on Earth? Mm-hmm. Doors, doors or, or wheels? wheels? Yeah. Any kind of wheel. Correct. Any kind of door. Correct. Including closets, cabinets. Um, yep. Uh huh. Not drawers, though. Doors. Drawers or drawers? Not drawers. <laughs> correct. Doors Just doors. doors. Right. Go ahead. You're the one who was <laughs> explaining a lot. <laughs> <laughs> doors. Yeah, absolutely. No. I'm going with doors. What? Wrong. What are you talking about? Am I really the only wheels here? What's your biggest advocacy for wheels? Think about, like, I saw a TikTok. Someone wanted to prove their point about doors. How many doors are on, like, hospitals and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Think of how many wheels. You need more than one in most scenarios to really have, like, a sturdy wheeling object. So there's, like, four on cars. Uh Kind of point to your car right now. Yeah, how many doors? Most are on cars the car? have have like five doors. They have the the two front, the two passengers, and the back door. Fair. Okay, I'll give you that point. However, think about all the things. Just and this is just based off of the TikTok I saw uh, in a hospital. Well, clearly, she did her research. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> I knew this was happening. Um, like all the IV things. That's like five wheels. And think of how many. All like the tires, like landfills, mm-hmm. wheels. No, no, I don't even think it's close. Um, I have a fridge here that has a door to it. Um, the other thing that I have to get, uh, okay, Mike is Mike is grabbing something. I'm, I'm I not, just he's opening about up, this. opening up his box of treasure. <laughs> Camera, Take your time. Right? Yep. What do you call that? That's a door. That's a door. That is a door. <laughs> yeah. Or is it a latch? No, it's definitely a door. Because you think about it terminology wise, a door separates one area to another. Door. Like a hinge, too. Yeah. I'm still sticking with wheels. I don't even know you anymore. <laughs> I feel like there's probably a real answer for this. How is there a way to really know, though? Because, like, going off of how many tires are in, like, tire landfills, how many doors are in, like, door landfills? I I feel like, you know, someone who's a professional uh, statistician would be able to figure this out, Mm -hmm. you know? We just don't have the skills to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm too stupid to... I, think like I did yeah. see the, I did see they make estimates of all kinds of things. Oh, I yeah. did I did see a one TikTok where it literally was just a floor of wheels. And like I don't know what that's used for, but it would be really cool to put like Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like to what facility is that being utilized oh, for? So That's a good point, like conveyor belt wheels. Like all those Yeah, but how do you, you know, get in like, those places? Doors. Think of all the elevators. <laughs> think of all the elevators. Okay. <laughs> think about all the wheels. Yeah, just, just think about all April the elevators. just thought about to, all the elevators. Went, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's doors by a mile. Now it's wheels. I can't believe you We're brought We're having an argument about this. Yeah, think time. about, yes. think about like, a, like, when I said doors, I'm like, all right, there's more... I was going real simple. Like, there's more houses in the world than cars. And I wasn't even thinking about doors on cars. But just, like, the amount of doors that are in one house is a lot. Just on various things. Mm -hmm. But think about, like, a huge building, like a skyscraper. How many doors are in there? Yeah. Garage doors. And there's a lot of skyscrapers in the world. Like, all the major cities. Three doors down. Garage doors? Well, how many <laughs> toolboxes on wheels are in that garage? Yeah, but within the toolbox, what, what do you call those on. things that have the those tools are, in it? Those are drawers. Okay. 
Sorry, I, I have, we, have, we have toolboxes in my house that don't have wheels. Absolutely. No. <laughs> There's a toolbox with wheels. Yeah, what about, we have some toolboxes. Here's, right here's here. another one. How about at a grocery store? Are there more wheels or doors? Mm. Doors. Mm. Yeah. Think about all the carts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then there's a door that you can actually lift the. Oh, you would call. See, I don't know if I call that a door. I don't think I would consider that. Think a door. about the wheels a drawer. underneath the conveyor <laughs> belt. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe in the case of a grocery store, there's more wheels, but everywhere else. What if it came out, though, if, if like an expert really did try to figure this out? What if it came out like almost even? What would people do then? <laughs> I could see it being even. Uh, yeah. Matt, Matt, I, I feel like I, I, I feel like, like in like, some oops. way it like balances it balances each other out. Like for every door, there's a wheel. Matt, I really like that our significant others are trying to actually find the answer where we actually don't establish an answer. Yeah, we just yell at each other, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I want to meet a statistician who can figure this out for us. There's probably going to be some type of news coming out in the next couple of weeks of being like, a statistician thought of this and concluded that doors are more than uh-huh. wheels. Yeah, probably. A clip of the podcast will be on that news report. There will be. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. Just like our soccer versus golf debate. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we will uh, update everybody on the next episode of the Funny Business Podcast. Matt, I thought would be fantastic if we had our significant others finish off the podcast because they've listened to us enough to know what we say. So, uh, Jenna, go ahead. Start off with what I usually say. So, April, what's your uh, piece of advice? You are totally going backwards on that one. (laughs) What do you mean I'm going backwards? That's amazing. I can't wait. we, We talk about what we do, what you can do. Oh, uh, follow us on social media at Funny Business Eat. Or, wait, I have to think about all the handles. <laughs> There's actually one link you can go to. On Instagram, well, it's I gonna say, isn't Funny there Business sponsor? Entertainment. Yeah, you're right on that. On yeah. Instagram, yeah, follow us at Funny Business Entertainment. Mm-hmm. On Twitter, God knows, because I'm not on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, but there's one link that you can go to all of them and visit them. Oh, (laughs) if you go to... Why am I blanking on the name? What's the opposite of uh, in a relationship? You're not single, you're riding. Solo. Solo Solo.to. It's the way to go. Slash. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Solo.to slash... Funny business, E-N. No, nope, funny business. Uh, <laughs> Close enough. What's, uh, what's E-N on Twitch? Twitch. Oh, <laughs> Twitch mm-hmm. and Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Twitch and Twitter. Okay. That makes it easy. All the T's. E-N. And then, uh, I guess I don't have to do the ads. They... Yeah, they do it by themselves. Right. I feel like it's no, time to do are, the ads. Actually, <laughs> you and April are going to record the ads after we're done here. Yeah. <laughs> Anchor. Follow us. Or not follow us. <laughs> Anchor. Anchor. Uh, <laughs> Allows us to record and edit our podcast. Right from our phone to computer. <laughs> hey, Jenna, when are we going to stop talking about it? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I think we're going to be talking about this for a long time. <laughs> like, this backfired on us really quick. What's that? I said this backfired on us really yeah. quick. Well, we- All right. So, April, what's, what's your advice for the, the good people of the, this world this week? <laughs> Man, I had so much time to prepare for this. I think everyone needs to smile and laugh. Yeah, make someone laugh. I like that. That's great advice. Thank you. That that's because we laughed a lot. I enjoyed this, and it's contagious. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Just like yawning. Thank you. Yeah, and STDs. (laughs) Well, Well, no. (laughs) COVID's contagious. COVID Um, is contagious. Positive can, yeah. vibes only. Yeah. The only negatives we're getting only. are COVID tests and pregnancy tests. Amen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> April, that was probably better advice than Matt has ever given. Why don't you shut the hell up? <laughs> hey, Matt, how's that uh, lunch packing going? <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, he didn't give it up for Lent. That's no, for sure. I didn't give it up for Lent. <laughs> um, 
We definitely did not have a lunch date on Thursday. No. That, that didn't happen. Mm. A quite fancy one, too. Oh. At yeah. work? <laughs> yeah. During work? In between. I well, break, I mean, like, yeah. you have your lunch break, but, like, I would never think wasn't like summer fancy. It, it wasn't, like, super fancy. Was it? I made a reservation. You, you did. You did. Make did you wear jeans? I or, did wear jeans. Yes, I did too. Oh, yeah, that's not serious. okay. Right. I thought it was like something like steak and all that, like mashed potatoes. It was on the menu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had their lunch menu though, so oh, good. Makes it a little better. Good, good, yeah, good, good, good. Well, that sounds uh-huh. like a great time. What? Right. We will. <laughs> We will we will now take it from here. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> Jenna and Great April. Job. Snaps. Snaps, snaps for Jenna and April. Snaps. If you haven't already, make sure you follow us on any of our social media or Spotify. Rate us five stars on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Um, this was fun. We wish it was in person. Um, but maybe next time when, when snow doesn't ruin our plans. Mm-hmm. So um, hopefully everybody enjoyed. Thank you all so much for 100 episodes of fun, laughter, and amazement. And until the next time, we'll see you all in the next episode. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>